Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. This is episode 168. And like I said, Deadpool has kind of taken over for a couple days on my channel. So for those of you who watched the five episodes of our video game playthrough of the Deadpool video game, thank you guys for doing that so much. I try to put a lot of work into those. I actually have been working on those for a while. And then I was like, hey, what better way to release them than right now for uh, the Venom movie, you know, for the Deadpool movie coming up? Uh, so, you know, the reason some people are like, hey, you know, why are you doing Deadpool stuff uh, temporarily? And the reason for that is, like I said in our video where I said Deadpool's taking over my channel, it's because he does have some connection to the alien symbiote, although I wouldn't necessarily call it canon or continuity, like they're sticking to the continuity. It's kind of a drifting continuity to where you could ignore it if you want, or if you like are a big Deadpool fan, you want him to be have a tie to the universe of Venom, then that's fine too. Uh, it works either way for me. Uh, I don't really, it doesn't really bother me reading these stories. I wasn't like, oh, come on, why are they trying to wedge Deadpool in? Deadpool always gets wedged in. He he. That's what he does. That's kind of why I wanted to do this, do this theme on the channel is that he's kind of taking over. That's what he does. He that he reached that level of popularity to where you could pretty much do anything with him, and most people will be okay with it. Uh, but uh, for me, you know, these stories that we're going to talk about. Uh, over the next few days is uh, they're, they're hit or miss. Uh, uh, most of them are hits though. The one that's a miss is actually the one we're going to talk about today and I was actually surprised because I think the person who wrote this is a very talented writer uh, but just didn't sell me on this idea. So I think about maybe like six years ago, maybe it was seven, I can't remember, but in the backup, you know, they were, Marvel was doing this thing where uh, instead of bringing the What If comic back, which I thought was a great comic book, it was something I really loved when I was younger, uh, instead of just bringing it back and making it a monthly title, what they decided to do was just pick, you know, certain books that were coming out and in the backup put like a, you know, eight page backup story and it would, you know, tie these, you know, four or five books together. So it's like, hey, if you buy these five random issues, you'll get an extra, you know, what if storyline in them uh, that connect all of them together. And that was a neat concept, but it wasn't really one that I liked. And all they were really doing at the time was like, what if Secret Invasion? And what if, you know, uh, you know, Secret Wars? And it was just all the big event books, you know, what if X-Men versus, you know, Avengers? And they really weren't doing anything interesting I felt uh, but this one kind of caught my eye because I thought well this is a neat concept what if Deadpool was possessed by Venom you know what if the Venom suit you know somehow found its way to Deadpool uh, what would that what would happen in that storyline and I thought that was kind of neat I was like hey that's pretty cool like Deadpool's not a character that completely interested me a lot of times but there have been some really good runs on the book that I have enjoyed uh, particularly the Cable and Deadpool book I really like that one the Joe Kelly stuff and the Gail Simone stuff in the 90s was pretty fun too with Jeff Loeb I think he wrote some of that as well uh, but uh, but then there was uh, or maybe maybe Jeff Loeb didn't come in I can't remember but I know Joe Kelly was on there and uh, Gail Simone uh, and then Daniel Way's run and that's kind of where I, I jumped out of Deadpool for a while but I did pop back in when Jerry Dugan was writing the character but Rick Remender he was this great writer that I really liked and he was you know rising at the time and he was doing Uncanny X-Force which was a book I really liked and he was also the Agent Venom writer for Flash Thompson and I was like wow this guy is going to be writing this what if Deadpool story like I should check it out and then I never did <laughs> never actually as intrigued as I was I never got around to it so recently I looked it up on Comixology and I found the single issue was available for $1.99 and I was like cool this takes all those four or five short stories that were in the backup of all these other what if books and put them all in one and I was like hey that's great I'll spend two dollars on that no problem because it's Rick Remender um, I don't know who the artist is on the book uh, the artist's name is uh, Sean uh, Mull uh, but so I never heard of Sean before does a pretty good job on the book uh, but I will say from a writing standpoint this was a huge miss for me uh, and I was surprised because of how much I like Rick Remender but what's clear to me is Rick Remender is not a comedy writer and he's certainly not a good fit for Deadpool at least in my opinion uh, this book was all over the place and I know it kind of has to be and I understand the energy and, and like the tone he was going for he wanted it to feel really random like random humor uh, but it just didn't work for me I'm sure someone maybe younger than me might get into this book but for me I was like I, I just didn't even want to finish it it was like homework to me reading the rest of this book and it's only like 25 pages uh, so that's saying something um, but the book starts off and it, it has one of the watchers in a different universe and they're like, hey, you know, the 616 is the main Marvel universe, but you weren't actually supposed to be reading that universe. You were actually supposed to be reading this one, which is 615.9 or something like that. And they're like, so uh, this is the real Marvel universe that you should be reading. And it's like already I'm like, oh, OK, like I understand it's a joke. But it's not a funny one. It's like everything just falls flat for me in this book. Like the only thing I liked was a, a Billy Ocean reference, which we're going to get to here in a second. Uh, but basically Deadpool 
gets a call, he gets hired uh, to kill the Beyonder from Secret Wars. And so this is kind of happening like right after this world's version of Secret Wars. And so Deadpool's like, all right, I'm on the case. But then he finds out that it's Galactus who hired him. And for some reason, Galactus has MODOK, you know, like the giant floating head thing, is his butt. I guess. So his butt is MODOK. That's it. It's, that's the joke. Uh, and then so, like, they go into, like, Deadpool going, all right, I'm going to go find the Beyonder and kill him. And when he sees Beyonder, Beyonder is, like, this white dude rocking, like, this jerry curl, you know. And he's like, hey, a white guy with a jerry curl. Very brave of you. And he's like, well, I, I kind of like this guy now. He's a, he's a little bit out there and a little different. So he starts hanging out with Beyonder. And then Beyonder, turns out, has a bodyguard and limo driver named Bobby Oceanic, which is which is a, a nod to Billy Ocean, who's a singer from the 80s who did uh, Get Out of My Dreams, Into My Car, uh, the song from License to Drive, the movie License to Drive, if you're a fan of that movie, which I was growing up. Um, and he's just randomly in it. And I'm like, okay, so again, it's just random humor, uh, just random things. And, and honestly, most I, d- I doubt most people who read this even got the Bobby Oceanic reference, even. Um, so uh, so then Spider-Man shows up. He's in the black costume. He tries to kill Beyonder, and he's like, you've t- you know, ruined everything. You've ruined my life. Because uh, I guess in this world, after Secret Wars, Spider-Man still has the black costume, but something different must have happened. So he wants to kill Beyonder, but uh, Bobby Oceanic, a.k.a. Billy Ocean, shoots uh, you know, uh, Spider-Man with like a ray gun, like a futuristic ray gun, and damages him and kills him. And then as Peter's falling, he says something like, I'm sorry, Lord Mephisto, I failed. And you're like, what? And I, clearly that's a reference to you know the one more day storyline that you know spider-man made a deal with mephisto but it's kind of like again reference that's it that's the joke uh and then the black costume from there ends up going on to deadpool and giving him a deadpool jerry curl made of symbiote tentacles that's what happens so after that then i guess deadpool and he you know he's still hanging out with beyonder and him and beyonder they want to become relevant again after secret wars beyonder doesn't feel really relevant anymore to the marvel universe Deadpool doesn't feel relevant because he feels like, you know, at this point his he's just coming on the scene, but nobody seems to care that he's around. And then they also hang out with Iron Man, who in this universe is still drinking alcohol. And uh, they're all hanging out in an alley drinking together. So basically after Beyonder's like, no, you know what? I'm going to go become relevant again. And Deadpool's like, you know what? I want to be relevant too. So he decides to sell Tony Stark to AIM to get money because he's like hey i need money and i'm going to sell you to aim and they're going to you know take you and take your iron man armor or whatever and then you know i i can get rich now and go you know start my life and he goes around and he i think he separates himself from the symbiote the symbiote goes and finds its way to this woman and then he ends up on like a jerry springer show where the woman is there with her tentacle hair and sitting next to deadpool and she's like you're the father of this child and you know and he's like no i'm not he's like you know that thing bonded to me and now and you're the mom now and i don't want anything to do with it and then like the galactus shows up and says no i'm the father of the symbiote child and you're just like because i guess like the symbiote's bonded this woman but it's the symbiote's pregnant obviously carnage reference uh and then so now you know like uh, uh i guess galactus is stepping in to take uh to, <laughs> i guess he's here to say like hey that he's i'm claiming this child it, the symbiote baby is mine or something and it literally just gets that weird and then you know uh after all that happens <laughs> deadpool doesn't he doesn't like the world the way it is uh he decides to bond with the symbiote again and he's just like killing everybody left and right killing all the heroes and he's trying to become relevant he gets into the white house he becomes like president of the world or whatever and that's still not enough for him he's still going around killing people uh he talks to doc samson at one point and uh, about you know because doc samson is a superhero but he's also a psychiatrist so he's talking to him about his problems and and you know doc samson's like hey maybe this is your issue and Deadpool's like, that's true, but I don't like hearing it. So he kills Doc Samson and then they just goes on, you know, and then the Beyonder and uh, uh, Galactus fight and the world blows up and then it cuts to like a movie premiere. And I, I know I'm, I'm like, you're like, wow, see, I can't keep up. And it's like, yeah, no, I know I can't either from this book. And I have it right in front of me. I'm flipping through the pages just to help me with this one. Cause like I said, this felt like homework. This book is so chaotic and so poorly written. And it's like Deadpool shows up to the premiere of his own movie about himself you know, with the symbiote and his life story with the symbiote, I guess. And then he like takes Thor's hammer. He goes into the bathroom, follows a guy who I think is cosplaying as Thor, takes his hammer and kills him with it. And then he realizes, you know, that it's, it's never going to be enough. He's never going to kill enough people. So then he goes home, finds that big laser ray gun that called the, the nullifier of continuity or something like that. And he aims it at us, the reader and shoots us and then kills us, kills his whole universe and kills you know, the Beyonder, whoever in the Watcher who's telling this story. And it's that's that's it. It's just it's just that messy. It's like it's this random 
hodgepodge of random events of, of jokes that aren't really set up and paid out. Like it's not structured comedically, but it you could tell they were trying to go for comedy. And so Rick Remender, I think, is a fanta fantastic writer on a lot of things. But I'm just going to base off this story, in my personal opinion, I'm going to say he should probably stay away from writing anything that's supposed to be funny because this just fell completely flat to me on every level. And uh, although I did appreciate like a Billy Ocean reference to some degree, I can't imagine too many people really got that. And also like who cares <laughs> like to an extent too um no offense to billy ocean but it's like i don't know i called him Bo bobby oceanic it's like uh, and they, they did mention a, a pr caribbean princess although caribbean queen is the name of billy ocean song but they mentioned uh you know uh that uh, caribbean princess in this alternate universe i guess um but anyway yeah so there you go like i guess deadpool took over my channel for me to start off with a crummy book which is unfortunate because the next two books we're going to talk about, which I might do in one episode, because I don't have a lot to say about the first one, because it doesn't have a ton of symbiote connections. But the next two are written by Colin Bunn, who is like hit or miss with me. But I thought the next two stories that we're going to talk about that he wrote were hits. Like, I liked them a lot. We're going to talk about Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars, and we're going to talk about Deadpool Back in Black. So we'll get into that in the next episode. But for this one, have you guys read What If Deadpool Was Possessed by Venom or What If Venom Possessed Deadpool? If you have, let me know what you think down below. Um, the art was okay. The writing, just a miss for me. Uh, but I want to hear what you think if you think differently. So let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I guess go see Deadpool 2. It's in theaters tonight. I'm going to go see it tomorrow morning. Uh, but I won't be doing a review of it uh, on this channel. I just stick to Venom stuff. Uh, but, uh, but you know, if on my streams, when I stream on Twitch, we'll probably talk about it at some point down the road. So make sure you're subscribed to me over there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.